Okay, I hope this doesn't sound repetitive. I'm having difficulty sleeping these days, so uh, often I come across topics uh, on my Facebook timeline, and uh, I think they they would make for a good um, a good video. So um, I was looking at an old news footage of well, relatively old. We're only talking two years of the Manchester Arena bombing in 2017. Well, actually, specifically, this was a tribute um, to it by choir. I mean, a tribute to the victims. Uh, one of the top comments on that thread was as follows. I am a Muslim, and I want you to know this has nothing to do with Islam. And RIP to the victims. Now, on the surface, that sounds like a good gesture. It sounds like, okay, she's, I assume this was a she, uh, she's reaching out to the victims. It's, uh, you know, it's good intentions, all that. But, I have a fundamental problem with that, and this is why. There is a track record here that whenever there's an Islamist attack, especially in non-Muslim countries, um, there are some Muslims who come out and say it's got nothing to do with Islam. We've seen this time and time and time again. I would put a question and retort to that. Would you say that the Crusaders, the medieval Crusaders, who went to the Holy Land, specifically to spread Christendom, would you say they had nothing to do with Christianity? I think most level-headed people would say, of course, of course they had something to do with Christianity. They were Christian fundamentalists. So why are we so dishonest? Well, I'm not. But why, why are a lot of people, whenever we see these attacks, so dishonest about calling a spade a spade? I would say this to those particular Muslims. If you're more concerned about the image of your faith than about the extremism that is done in its name, you don't have your priorities right. So instead of going around preaching to people, oh, don't judge Islam, Start tackling the extremists in your midst. Of course, you're not individually responsible for what these fanatics do. But when you churn out this propaganda that's got nothing to do with Islam, okay, you're going to get, um, you're going to get likes from politically correct people. You're going to get likes from people who, um, you know, other Muslims who see that you're you know, trying to be a PR person, I'm afraid I don't buy it. It's not that I think you're a bad person, but I think you're being dishonest. This is, goes to those who say that. And here's the thing. We talk about terrorism in the format of extremism, but I've made this point before. How about attitudes towards, for example, gay rights? I mean, look at what's happening in these schools in Birmingham and elsewhere. Those people aren't terrorists, the people protesting, they're not terrorists. But they do have regressive attitudes towards gay rights. And I've looked at the material that's being taught. It's not explicit. It's not forcing anyone to be gay. It's just talking about tolerance for gay people. And, you know, young children, I think it's... I could understand the controversy if we're talking about, you know, explicit sexual references. But that's not what it's about. It's just saying that some people are gay. What's wrong with teaching children tolerance? So my point is, the people who are protesting are obviously not terrorists, but nor are they moderate. They're showing intolerance. And um, so if we take that to a more extreme level in a country like Pakistan, and I think Pakistan's a good example. It's the world's second most populous Muslim nation after Indonesia. Um, how often do we hear about Christians being persecuted in Pakistan or other minorities? Pretty much all the time. And that's mainstream society. That isn't terrorists doing it. That's mainstream, ultra-conservative society. What I find striking is that we, we're now in the year 2019. We're almost in the third decade of the 21st century. And yet it is still difficult to criticise religion without some idiot saying that you're a bigot. And, you know, 
I can understand Muslims being defensive. They don't like their image, the image of Islam being ruined, right? But it's the useful idiots who churn, who go along with that propaganda. And I've seen non-Muslims say, oh, it's got nothing to do with Islam. Islamic extremism is part of Islam. Wake up. But, you know, saying that, if I, if I was on the BBC or something, people would say, oh, who's this far right guy? I have no time for the far right. I have no time for blood and soil nationalism. And I'm, I have no time whatsoever for the likes of e the EDL and Britain First and such groups. But polite society and the regressive left have a hell of a lot to answer for when it comes to placating this nonsense. And it absolutely infuriates me. Why? Because I believe it puts up a barrier to solving the problem. If we cannot even call a problem by its name, how the hell are we supposed to confront it? In more recent years, there has been a little bit more acknowledgement. Theresa May did use the term Islamism. But I don't think we've gone anywhere near far enough in terms of recognising what the problem is. Because still, people who come out with this line, um, it's, it's usually imams and moderate Muslims, or they would consider themselves moderate Muslims, who would say, oh, it's terrible, I condemn this attack, and so sorry for the victims, but don't criticise Islam. That's pretty much the mentality that they have. So if you are saying don't criticise Islam, you're not a moderate. You are not a moderate. Because what you're essentially saying is that you would effectively support blasphemy laws. I will condemn anti-Muslim bigotry. That is to say, people who are stirring up hatred against all Muslims. But at this, by the same token, I will confront dishonesty within Islam. I mean, if we cannot do this in free societies, you know, I could, if this was Pakistan, I would be, you know, I'd be a dead man by now, literally. Literally. My house would have been surrounded by an angry mob. I would have been beaten to death. That's the world we live in. And the moral card is that I see from those who think that they're being open-minded by defending religious totalitarianism, or at least trying to make this equation with bigotry if you criticise it, I would say that hating all Muslims is bigoted, but saying that Islamic extremism is a fact is not bigoted. And the same applies for saying Christian fundamentalism is a fact. That's not bigoted against Christians. Yes, the Westboro Baptist Church does have something to do with Christianity. They may not be representative, but they're going by the name of Baptists, so it's up to Baptists to acknowledge it, condemn them. I, I just don't accept this argument. It's got nothing to do with religion. To me, that's a case of, oh, well, we'll wipe our hands clean of it. Hinduism. Look at far-right Hindu fanaticism in India, where Christians and Muslims have been lynched to death. Religious extremism is a fact. And people who say that it doesn't exist, or people who say it's got nothing to do with this, are lying through their teeth. Or maybe they genuinely do believe it. Maybe they, they've been lying to themselves for so long that they really do believe it. And I get it. You know, if you are a, a Muslim who doesn't believe in stoning adulterers to death, if you're a Muslim who is repulsed by the likes of ISIS, as most are, I, I totally understand why you would want nothing to do with them. But simply saying it's got nothing to do with Islam. Islam is a major world religion, right? So how can you say that you alone are the true Muslim. Because these jihadists are convinced that they are true Muslims. I'm not saying their interpretation is correct from a theological standpoint. I'm sure they get a lot of things wrong from a theological standpoint, but there's others who would say that they are the true Muslims because they are interpreting the Quran literally. You know, there, there can be a theological debate around that. But the point is, Islam, like Christianity, is a major world religion. It's got about 1.6 billion adherents. So this idea that of 1.6 billion people, 
there are no extremists. It, to me, it's kind of like putting the issue onto atheists. If it's got nothing to do with religion, then by extension, you're essentially saying it's atheists, which is, you might not say that, but that's essentially what that argument goes down to, which would obviously be nonsense. So let me just conclude with a few thoughts here. I understand people feeling embarrassed, feeling that they want to distance themselves from monsters that do things um, and say they're doing it in the name of Islam or Christianity. You could argue it's a distortion of that. You can argue they're interpreting it in a perverted way. But do not say that Islamic extremists have nothing to do with Islam because they want to spread a caliphate. It isn't just ISIS. They want to spread a caliphate. They want to impose severe Sharia law. Sharia law is Islamic law. And there's arguments over its ex ex exact interpretation, but fundamentally that's what it is. So I really have no patience for this argument that religious extremism has nothing to do with religion. And it infuriates me that these pathetic hypocrites, these cards, who will have this knee-jerk reaction that when you call it out, then you must be a bigot. I think their, their attitude is unforgivable. Because all they're doing is enabling the extremists. Going around saying, oh, I'm sorry for the victims, but this has nothing to do with Islam, isn't spreading peace, it's spreading ignorance.